Gabby Dawkin <laughs> is here. Hi. And I'm so excited. I probably just blew out my mic every time I get excited. My producer's like, just get a little less excited and stop blowing Keep out your octave down on your mic. But I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. In my hotel room. I would have showed up in a robe and like gotten in bed and chatted. It would have been really on brand. Okay, next next time. time. Next time. Next time we'll do that, actually. (laughs) Gabby Dawkin, if you're not familiar, is a cookbook author of three or four books. Almost five. Almost five. Yeah. Grilling. Yeah. What's the name? Grilling All the Things. It's grilling, subtitle, all the things. That's such a good. It's very, it's very me. <laughs> yeah. All the things. Okay. Grilling all the things comes out. May 21st. Oh, great. Duh. Just in time for summer. Just in time for summer, baby. Oh, I can't wait. I think that, well, first let's finish introducing you and then we'll get into all things grilling, all the things. Um, four-time cookbook author, about to be five-time, mother of a three-year-old yeah. precious Redheaded, how did you get so wild lucky? woman? Well, redhead runs on both sides of our family, and if it ever shifts, I'll be devastated. devastated. Like, she, she cannot turn into a blonde or brunette. All I wanted was yeah. a redheaded child. I, I would like to be redhead. <sighs> I know it's very upsetting. All I wanted was a redheaded child. There was absolutely no chance of this. <laughs> my brother in law is a redhead, and my sister got no redheads. Well, it could you could have had a chance. And she was like, Thank God, and I was like, What the fuck is wrong? Well, what's so funny is she's a redhead and her name is Poppy. Yeah. But we didn't know that. We didn't know she's going to be a redhead. She just came oh. out. The guy that my doctor pulled her out of my stomach because I had a C-section. And he's like, <laughs> you have a redhead. I'm like, well, her name's Poppy. So, like, cool. <laughs> didn't think that through, but whatever. It's so perfect. Does everybody say, is that why her name's Poppy? Yes. And, like, and I'm like, no, no I named no. her, like, while she was still yeah. in the womb. Yeah. In utero. <laughs> I did yes. not know the hair color. Mother of a gorgeous redheaded child named Poppy, um, Instagram star, owner and founder of Dawkin and Co. Yes, a which is currently a spice line. Yes, mixed blend spices. I've used them all the time on my Instagram. You guys are familiar. Is are there plans for Dawkin and Co. too? Yeah, like we would. Our plans are to keep it pantry. So like, I don't want to yeah. ship anything that has to be cold or frozen. But if it doesn't have to be cold or frozen and it can ship at room temperature, we're in. Fair game. Yeah. Do you, can Big you tell plans. us? Can you give us the scoop on what your next product is going to be outside of the blends? Yep. We don't know. Oh, that's so so, so what's so interesting about Dawkin and Co. is we've learned this whole other language that I so like I had a line of products with a retailer yeah. before where they licensed my name out, but like I wasn't in charge of any yes. of the ops of it, yes. and I wanted that control. And now, oh, it's you so, are a control. Freak. I'm a total. Control you said this. Freak. I would be like somebody else manage this and like you want that for the first time so you understand things and then you're like i get this i can do this on my own but i you when you for like example dalkin and co our producer of the blends is in washington and if we do oils or vinegars or whatever it'll be someone totally different so it's really a matchmaking process to see like where you find the best fit and who's going to be able to be as you know, flexible as you yeah. need them to be. Okay, so then when I, the consumer, go to place an order for your fabulous lemon oil that yeah. you're going to do, whatever, yeah, and right. your taco seasoning, uh-huh. and those live in two separate places. So they'll, they'll, they will be produced in two separate places. So I'd love to find the olive oil producer in California. Yeah. The spices are up in Washington, but they all live at our 3PL facility, which is another language of, like, fulfillment, and that's where you house all of your product and they pick it they pack it and they ship it from there and you love having your hand in all these pies i mean love is a really strong word but like yes it's really cool when there's an issue like we just uh switch 3PLs because our 3PL was breaking stuff. They weren't like shipping it properly Ugh, packaged. And so if, people were getting Yeah, they'd glass. get like one broken glass. It, w- it was only 2% of our orders, but that's too much for and me. Thomas is customer service. Okay. So when they respond and it's Thomas's name on there, you know, Thomas, they're, is, they're, husband. Thomas is my husband. The tone changes from like, I can't believe I have this broken thing to, oh my God, this really is a small family business. Like, oh. And we remedy it immediately. We'll, yes. we'll send you a fixed one, no yeah, problem. But d- it, the 
my experience with customer service is I have a paid newsletter subscription, you know, and I don't know how to change it, but my phone number is on there. It shows my my cell phone number shows up on people's at the bottom of the newsletter. No, on their credit card statement. So people will sometimes subscribe (laughs) and then forget that they've subscribed or subscribe their daughter for Christmas. And they'll text you. Oh, they don't text. They call. This has happened like 10 times probably. Hi, I have a charge on my credit card that I did not make. This is a fraudulent charge for carolinechambers.com. Do you know what this is? And I'm like, hello. This it's is, my stub This is Caroline Chambers speaking. <laughs> How can I help you? This happened one time. This woman was so angry. And I think people like just forget to treat – They want what they want. They forget there's a human on the other end of the line. But I think people also, yeah, they forget that it's a real human. And they also like think that the angrier they are, the better service they're going to get. That person's going to know they're so mad. And so like I get the angry call in my, I'm like, hold on. Can I put the baby down? Yeah, you like have all three children hanging on you. (laughs) Okay, so I love that Thomas is customer service. Yeah, he is. And we like, we the first like two or three weeks of launch, we would lay in bed at night and like do the responses to everyone because like there were questions about why we didn't ship to Canada or London or all these different places. And you just have to be lovely. Yeah. Like, but like, that's kind of the MO of what's got me cooking anyways. Occasionally, I'm very combative yeah. <laughs> when people judge me about my child's protein intake, for example, this morning. But like, for yeah. the most part, I try yeah. to be very customer service yeah. oriented. Yeah. Like, we are in the business of customer service that's, after all. That's We're our also job. just like nice people, which is why we like this But like, job. that's not everybody. Yeah. That's in this no, job. It's really interesting. Certainly not. Yeah. I do think that there are influencers or creators, whatever you want to call us, yeah. um, who don't have like the personal relationship with their followers, mm-hmm. fans that somebody like you does. Like when I just saw you in the lobby, I was like, I feel like I'm seeing an old friend because I yeah. feel like I know you so well because your stories are so like intimate and I know what's up in your life. And that's not always the case. And nice people don't there's a big difference yeah. of the type of person I was you can literally follow. having that conversation yesterday because there are a lot of these people who are exploding on TikTok yes. and like making all these incredible oh viral videos that are beautiful, beautiful and they are so well produced oh my and they God. are make my videos look like a 2-year-old did them literally a fucking 2-year-old but like there's uh, like a, I can't keep up correct but like I there's such a difference in that person producing viral content who's going out there by the way and getting millions of dollars for books for book uh oh yeah what are they called advances Mm -hmm. and 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 then they go and the book launches and no one comes to book tour because they haven't spent any time actually cultivating an audience and like responding to dms or helping trouble people troubleshoot their recipes or whatever it is so it's a really like interesting thing i'm seeing in the editing world that editors are having to deal with because they're not thinking through beside like other than the fact that this has an insane amount of views and they have insane amount of followers whoa okay that's so interesting because i see all these like tiktok people's cookbooks coming out and I'm like god it was so hard for me to get a cookbook deal and these so people hard. like overnight sensations get them but yeah you're right I that I would never I mean TikTok stars you are crushing it we are so proud of you it's yeah. so cool I just think there's such Support a beauty them. into what you've done and what I've done and like cultivated a community however big small whatever yeah. it is like you can't that is so important and yeah we're very lucky to have that we're so lucky and it's also like the coolest part of the job yeah like I it's funny I just because you know too many kids too many things going on (laughs) I forget to dig into my like business analytics yeah which is a stupid that's why Thomas is your (laughs) is is Thomas do you call him is he your CEO no you're the boss you're the CEO we're like kind of co-CEOs I I would say he is more of a CTO okay okay He's in charge of a lot more tech and ops yeah. for both What's Got Be Cooking and Dalkin and & Co. And I'm more creative and we're both obsessed with analytics. Like yeah. we're both very into that. I just like math is my love language. Like oh, I just God. love math. Will you, can we have a moment after this? Yeah, can we, we can talk about it. <laughs> anyway, I was looking at my Substack analytics last night. I just yeah. like I was digging around Substack trying to plan something for tomorrow. And I was like, oh, what's this? And it shows me like my top people who engage with the Substack. Of course, this exists. I didn't know. But all of the names are people that I also like DM with all the time. Duh. Like yeah, these are my super amazing. These are my super supporters. And it was the coolest thing to be like, oh, OK. Margot, who is a super of fan of both Margo. of ours. I love Margot. Is in my top 20. 
And like I could see how many people she's gifted a subscription to, given a subscription to, how many times she's forwarded emails. I was like, Margot's come on every single What's Gobby Cooking retreat we've ever done. She came to Galapagos, she came to San Miguel, and she came to Napa. Yeah, she's the best. I just die for her. And you know her simply through her following Good Scabby Cooking. Yeah, and she was always retreat. just like there and really supportive and promoting me. And then she came to Galapagos and then we became like real friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, she, when she, okay, so Margot is a follower and super supporter of both Gabby's. And lives and right by mine, you. And lives right by me. And so one day we were in the same Pilates class oh or something. Gosh. We go to the same gym. So we're in the same Pilates class. And she was like, hey, I'm Margot. Like, I, I tag your recipe. I I'm like, mixed. <gasps> I was like, Margot, <laughs> you're here. <laughs> yeah, like meeting that person who has been so supportive of you online, yeah. actually in person, I was like, She's I the, can't believe you're she's here. She's the freaking best. She tags us all the time. She's like, this is a what's got me cooking and Carol mashup yeah. recipe. Now that we both share Dan's recipes, Dan Pelosi, so yeah. much, she now is I a know. Dan super I supporter. Know. Have you met her husband? No. Oh, he's fantastic, too. Of course, because he comes out on the retreats. Yes. Well, he didn't come. He actually didn't come to Napa or San Miguel. She, oh, yeah, she went with a her friend. girlfriend, um, Denise. Fine. But she, he came with us to Galapagos. And we were 10 days on a boat with 32 strangers. So, like, we got to know everyone very quickly quickly but okay it, we haven't even delight. finished getting through your businesses yet <laughs> but that is also like a little sub business of yours you do these what's gobby cooking retreats yeah my listeners and followers know that i have been trying to plan a retreat for over a year now it's a full it's so much work it's a full-time job <laughs> so much work i would love to know i would love to know kind of like the breakdown economically like you don't have to give me any numbers but what do you you have your blog. Okay. You are yeah. one of the OG oh, bloggers who's this... still actually like showing up in that space. Oh my gosh. Do you wait? Do you I, have I some literally numbers for just, us? I don't have numbers, but I had <laughs> took a picture the other day. Let me see if I can find it. I have this on my desk. It's a bucket of, it was this a question, like all the different businesses yeah. we have, like buckets under what's got be cooking. Exactly. Oh my God. Let me see if I can find it. Give me this. your buckets. I want to know like what and like where are you spending the majority of your time? What do you like to spend time on versus what Thomas spends his time on? Such a... Oh, yes, I found it. Yay. Oh, my God. I'm so proud yeah. of myself. Oh, this is so great. Okay, so this is What's Gotta Be Cooking. So we do have the website. Yep. It takes so much time and energy and money to run a website. It's wild. Which, you know. if you would please direct yourself to carolinechambers.com is why it yeah. looks like it was created by a two-year-old. Well, but you have some stack, which is also time and money to manage. Yeah, and like, I know you have an editor. Right, like, there's right, a lot happening. Right. I should have an editor for what's My website cooking. is so bad, though, because it's so hard. But like, you have you have a physical place where people can get your recipes yeah. via Substack, yeah, which right, is so right. important. Mine's my Substack. So we've got the website, which I would say accounts for, I don't know. I, I don't even know. A fourth of our income. Oh, a I thought it'd be so much more than that because of your ad ad revenue. Well, no. ad revenue is amazing, but we do so so. Hold on, okay. I'll tell you. Yeah. Then we have cookbooks. So we've got the fifth cook cookbook coming out in May, which is a is very small portion of our income because Ugh. I spend all my advance money on producing the most amazing book. Like I don't think people understand no, that. I, I it it is basically will free. I make a, <laughs> will I make a dime on this cookbook? Potentially no. <laughs> like, I'll lose money because I'm on book tour yes. for you know 21 days. Yes. But that's fine. To that's me, fine. writing a book is marketing. <laughs> yes, and it is an opportunity to get out into the world and meet everyone that I'm communicating with online all the time. One 100%. And like putting out a beautiful book with recipes that don't exist online with incredible photography, incredible propping, incredible food styling, great write. Like that is just like a pe- – like I just wanted a tangible part of what's got to be cooking and the yep. book was the first thing that was like tangible. Yeah. Um, then we have social and brand deals. So then we're, we're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We still do Pinterest, Twitter, blah, 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 blah. We do, do all Pinterest. that. Yeah. God, well, because so... I'm driving traffic to the blog. Yeah. Like you, if, uh, everything comes back to the website for yep. me. So we do all these different social things. And then there's brand deals, uh-huh. um, which, uh, you know, play out mostly on social, but also – Recently, I like um, a spokesperson for different brands. I'll do uh-huh. TV appearance. Like, there's all sorts of things you can you do. You do TV on the brand appearances deal. on account, like as a brand ambassador. Yeah. So, like, I just finished this brand deal for Finish, 
uh, dishwashing detergent oh, over yeah, the holidays. Yeah. And they booked me on all these morning shows. And like I went, it's it's tough to get a brand on a morning show. Yeah. So if you have a personality attached to it, there's a little bit more of a draw because no one wants to watch just like, like you're here, here's how to clean your dishes for Thanksgiving. <laughs> but it's more exciting. It's like, exciting? here's Gobby and here's three recipes and here's how to set up the timer and all these different things to like really help execute your Thanksgiving. So are you like in your morning show segment like, okay, and then I'm going to put the dishes in. Yeah. So like some some morning shows are funny. Yeah. Like, they're probably like you have to like you can only mention it once or the host is the only one who can mention it. It's just different. great for you. Yeah, it's You're great. Like, but so there's like a... a thing of finish on the table that's like yeah. propped with all the beautiful yeah, Thanksgiving yeah, yeah, dishes, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's cool. But brand deals are a large, a yeah. large percentage of our income. Um, and then there's affiliate uh-huh. income. And uh, you're really good at that. Am you've got I? The, oh. I think I'm okay. What? I think I could do better. Okay, but your website, you have such clearly, you're like, um, yes. is it called the What's Gobby Cooking? The master list. The master yeah. list. That's great. I will someday copy you but on But you that. absolutely uh, should. It's just such a beautiful thing. It's to basically like, all of her essentials. It's a page on my website and it's broken out into like, here's what my top 30 products in my kitchen and my top 30 products. Uh, in my bedroom, my linens, yeah, my so towels, smart. all these things that people always ask about. Exactly. That's so why I can it's the most smart. Direct you to one place. A, yeah. the affiliate cash all up. But yeah, it's great. honestly, mostly just being able to be like, go check my website. Correct. Go check my, my favorite website. red lip, all that kind of stuff. Um, we had a TV show, which TVC did not pick up for a second <sighs> season. So we're almost in the clear to shop it around again. Okay, great. But that is another revenue. Would you revenue. shop around the same show? It was called My in my uh, it's friend, called My Best Friend's my Kitchen. My Best Friend's Kitchen. Uh, so we traveled for it to our, my friend's kitchen. Yeah. So like one day we were filming in Hillary Duff's kitchen, and yeah. the next day we were in Megan Trainer's kitchen, and then it was just like too complicated. Yep. I would film it at my kitchen. Yep. Or a studio kitchen that looks like my kitchen, yeah. if we're being honest. Like, yeah, 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 I, it yeah. would be too much to do that in my uh, house for Poppy's Poppy. Poppy's like, yeah, Poppy, be like, get the fuck yeah. out. <laughs> Have you got to go? Nap time. Leave. <laughs> Scram. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. If it gets picked up, great. If yeah. it doesn't, we'll come up with a different so idea. So are you able to, you and you are able to shop around the same name, same concept? We'll change it a little bit, right, but it like won't be mostly going the same concept. Okay. Yes. Um, cooking with a friend. Yeah. Like yeah. coming, and it's kind of like cooking meets podcast meets like shooting. Like here's the thing yeah, about cooking the shows. Yeah. They're too formulaic. Yeah. And like, I don't need someone to teach me how to boil water. What I really want to talk about is like your fertility journey. Yes. And like, what are you eating and how are you feeding your family or whatever it is? Like, I want to talk about real things. Yes. So we'll see what happens And so there. was that what it was? I remember watching no, it. No. Yeah. Because they, um, you know, it was what it was, it was in, its, in its ideation. Right. But when you get a network involved, there are opinions on yes. what you can and can't talk yes. about. And fertility, for some reason, is like my favorite topic, but Duh. not everyone else's favorite yeah. topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Wait, yeah. your podcast about how to be the best birth partner? <gasps> fucking perfection oh my God, it was for so to i it. was like we need to have another child just so thomas yes. can listen to this it was oh, that makes so me good. really happy but it was so thoughtful i Thanks. mean having three children i feel like you have such a like thank you you know but yeah. like really well thought out material thank you i appreciate that i do feel like i have you know a few areas where i can truly be an expert and like once you have three kids like you kind of know, you know what you need yeah so yeah it's very fun. smart that. i've you. sent it to many people thank you all right um, keep going and then the last thing is experiential events which includes yes, the retreats okay. and dinner parties and all that kind of stuff okay talk to me about can you talk to me about experiences for a minute because you and i both like love connecting with our audiences actually being there are you, are these like a big money making venture? No. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be totally transparent. Uh, the, the travel. Yeah. I have not made money on yet. The retreats. No. The dinner, mm, the dinner parties. May, hold on. We'll do, let's break them up into two. Yep. So like uh, Galapagos, what a, a company called Quasar approached me, yeah. which is Quasar. a company I've traveled with before. My parents did Galapagos with them and I did uh, Patagonia with them yes. twice and it was just an amazing travel company in South America and yeah. they were like we would love to do something with you uh you know we would love for you to sell four rooms on our 32 passenger boat and I was like how about all 32? yeah I was like, excuse me sir no <laughs> this isn't gonna work for me like that's just categorically not possible I'm, that would be me leaving too many people out <laughs> and he was like okay well like we'll give you this one week that's free except for one other couple's on the boat already 
but like maybe I can get them to switch. And I was like, okay. And I teased it and I teased it and we launched it and it sold out in two minutes. And it, which is wild because like it wasn't a cheap trip. Like no. that's an expensive trip to yeah. do. Going like any sort of trip like that, Safari, Galapagos, it's like $1,000 a night minimum. Because it's all the, it, whenever it's an all inclusive situation, people, it's hard to wrap your mind around that. Yeah. Because, you would have maybe spent that much money anyway in a day at all your and different meals. like it's your safety. You're on a yeah. boat in the Galapagos. Yes. Like it's someone. It's just someone managing all that. Yes. Safari is the same all you price. Do is show up. Yeah, you don't have to do it. You don't have to yeah. lift a finger yeah, besides getting thing. on a plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Galapagos. So you. The only thing for Galapagos was that you were given your free room and board. Yeah. And but you didn't make money beyond that. No, they paid for my flight, but they paid for me to fly coach. And I was like, no, I'm not flying coach. Thank you so much. I'm flying business. So like, I'll pay for that. Um, so no, I made I no you. money on it. But yeah. to me, I wanted the I wanted the data so I could then sell it into something down the road and be like, hey, look what I did. I made this company Quasar $300,000 yes. in two minutes by yes. selling out their boat. Yes. And then we went on this incredible trip with 30 people and had the time of our lives. And yeah. we all produced content. We got all these extra impressions for yeah. Quasar. And then we did it again in Napa uh -huh. at the end of my last book tour, just yep. like a smaller weekend activation. Yep. And then we did it. And most... was it attached to your book tour? Yeah, it was like the, it was like the finale of it. Oh, I'll happily put you in touch with the Auberge folks. They okay. host a great event. Great. Um, but they, they handle all the logistics for me. So it's not that complicated on my end once you have a great partner. Right. It's finding the good partners. This is my sister is a travel agent. And so she and I were like, let's plan a retreat. Oh, let's plan cool. a But it's, if you're, I just want the hotel to freaking do the whole thing. And they don't all get it. And they don't get it. Mm -mm. They're like, we can sell you a, you know, 20% discount room rate. I'm like, and no, no, no. Sure. We'll take a $50,000 deposit <gasps> yes, for you. Yes. They mm -hmm. all want to deposit as if it's a wedding. Yes. And I'm like, no, yeah. you're not getting, you're not getting it. <laughs> well, and it's like, I just need to I literally give go, you a $50,000 deposit. I can do that. You will max out my credit yeah. card and it's then I'm work. screwed. Like it's that's not going to work. <laughs> But uh, it's you really have to find the right hotel or travel partner that understands the power of your community yeah. and like trusts you enough to give you this block of rooms for two weeks or whatever uh -huh. it is before you put the tickets on sale mm -hmm. to just be like, yes, we're going to trust you with it. If you don't sell out, fine, we'll sell the rest yes. of them. But like we're going to let you try and do the whole thing to start. Yes. The other thing you've done are these dinner party sort of Mm -hmm. across that yeah. you did one with Alex Snodgrass from The Define yeah. Dish and... I can't remember who Los, else I've done with. Los, oh, in Los Olivos. Los Olivos yeah. recently. Yeah. So what do those look like? That's those just a are, ticketed one night thing? Yeah, ticketed one night event, event. And it's just like fun. Again, it's a way to give back to our community. It's a way to get everyone together, make new friends, have this yeah, like intangible so in-person event. Yes. Which in today's world, we're all online all yeah. the time. Like every nobody leaves their house. Mm -hmm. So like it's a really special moment for me as the host to be able to bring all these people together yeah. and have a beautiful night. Yeah. Watch but, this space. Yeah. I'm going to be copying you, you on that because it is truly the coolest part of this job. And I – but like I don't want to just sit here and DM people anymore. I want to like get out and meet. Yeah. And, and like you said, cookbooks – while we might not make a goddamn penny because we spend our whole advances on our book tours and our photos, they are such an opportunity to like get out there and connect. It's funny. I've realized like I've just started planning my book tour with my PR firm or whatever. And I'm like, why did I not just do these events before? Yeah. Like, why have I not been just trying to get on the Today Show? Like, I have, you know, a sub stack that's quite successful. Yeah. Like, why don't you I... have the number one sub food yeah, sub stack? Like, why yeah. didn't I try to get on the Today Show because of that? Yeah. But there's something that just feels so like the moment about a cookbook. It's just so exciting because you do, you put so much time and effort into the testing, the yeah. photography. Photography. I think those shows also love to have something to like grasp onto. Yep. Like, whether it's a product launch, a book launch, yep. uh, like a some sort of speaking event that you're doing, I think they like to have that touch point yep. but like listen once you're in with today show or gma or someone like that they're gonna keep having you back and back and back. yeah you're on their list yeah yes i love the today show folks like oh, they are great family to me and they're so fun to work with and you know, they invite me on all the time i haven't been able to go because i'll be like deep in an egg retrieval or something <laughs> like that but like they're also very understanding of that yeah. and they're like cool let us know when you're not doing an let egg retrieval the same day <laughs> okay well We've got we've gone through your buckets, so now let's <laughs> talk about your <laughs> egg retrieval buckets. <laughs> What's the latest 
Poppy is three. Poppy is three. Are you deep in an egg retrieval currently? No, we're not. We did one egg retrieval before Christmas. Okay. So we did an egg retrieval a year and a half ago. We got... We got, I mean, I'll just tell you numbers. I never mm-hmm. told anyone this online because I don't want people to compare. Like, it's a, it's like, like. Oh, interesting. Like yeah. Everyone, we got 16 eggs. Yep. That got, came out of me that fertilized. And then of those 16 eggs, by the end of day five, growing to day five. And after day five, you then send them off for yes. testing. Have you done IVF? Nope. Yeah. But I have so, really but you close know, friends. But you know, you speak this. Yep. Uh, you send it out for testing. Of those 16, probably. I don't remember, like eight or six made it to day five and two came back normal. Mm -hmm. And we implanted both of them over the course of the year and neither one of them (laughs) took. One just never took and one was like a wildly traumatic miscarriage. And I like, I like ruined my OB's office. It's fine. (laughs) Ruined your OB's office. (laughs) Okay, I'll tell everyone what happened then. So I I miscarry. I I go to my... uh, what's it called? My fertility office. I'm nine weeks and they're like, no more heartbeat. And I was like, okay, no problem. I've been here before. I've had nine miscarriages at this point. They were like, let's do the pill this time rather than a DNC procedure. Just like- Have you this- had nine DNCs at this point? Yes. I've never done the pill once before because to me, I'm like, put me out, knock me under, or put me under, yeah, knock wanna, me out. I don't want to hear I this. I want to be a part of this. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like, let's just try the pill for a sa- fucking bad idea. Uh, I do the pill, whatever. I go into the office- and they're like, you're clear. Two weeks later, I go in for my OB appointment just for my pap smear. Yeah. And he goes, Gobs, you're not done with this miscarriage. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, I was like, they cleared me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, let me just see if it's this one little piece of tissue. Oh, no, it wasn't. I proceeded to bleed out all over my doctor's office and had to go into emergency surgery Shut in the up. office with no drugs. No. And I bleed. In the off, in the OB I'm office. wearing these same kinds of pants. I bleed through my pants. They have to throw them away. By the way, Thomas is not here with me because I thought I was just going for a not. pap. Yeah. And they called Thomas. I'm like shaking and convulsing because like I'm losing so much blood. By the way, I was going to Taylor Swift that night. Fuck. Fuck is right because I missed it and I had a box seat. Oh. Anyway, t- my doctor calls Thomas. He goes, this is what's happening. We need you to come bring Gobby and she needs another pair of pants. Thomas fucking rolls up with a pair of booty shorts. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> and I was Thomas, like, are you high? Thomas? Are you okay? Thomas did not listen to my episode. <laughs> <laughs> booty shorts. And my doctor, Kat, was like, I'm going to give you a pair of scrubs. And I was like, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Be the one. I leave the office. I have a balloon in my uterus no, to stop oh, the bleeding because oh they couldn't God. get me to stop with like a sack attached to my leg full of blood. Oh. So he's like, you can't go to Taylor Swift. And I was like, excuse me? You're going to ruin my day and it's then my ruin my best life. friend's 35th birthday <gasps> and she got us a box. I'm going to Taylor Swift. And he's like, no, you're not. Go to go home. I, went, I was <laughs> devastated, mostly because I missed Taylor Swift. Like yeah. the miscarriage was already over in my was already over oh it was awful and then we did another <sighs> and then we did another egg retrieval after that so we have two more embryos on ice <laughs> okay two embryos on ice uh thank you i if anyone has ever experienced a miscarriage who is listening i bet they haven't gotten to laugh through a miscarriage <laughs> story like that and i know that you have not gotten to laugh through all of these stories so thank yes. you for sharing of the co- I'm happy. humor and absurdity of that it's one it's absurd but here's the deal Ugh. about miscarriages. Have you had one before? Nope. I, when we first got pregnant, we went to my parents' house to tell them. And it was like, I was five weeks pregnant, a.k.a. I just missed my period. Yeah. And my parents are doctors. We come from doctors. And I told them we filmed it, waiting for this epic, like, oh, my God. And my parents were so cool and collected. Huh. And they were like, this is amazing. Let's celebrate once you get past your first trimester. Because, like, the numbers just for miscarriage are large. Yeah. Like, one in four pregnancies in four. ends in a miscarriage. The fact that I've had nine is absurd. Like, that's just a lot. Yep. But we that, like, really level set our expectations right away. And we were, we were able to look at it really as just science. Like, yeah. something was wrong. And my body was like, nope, this isn't the one. And then we magically got pregnant with Poppy. So, like, we knew we can carry a Did child. Did you get magically pregnant yeah, with Yeah, during COVID. On the night of my book launch during COVID. Shut up. I was wasted. And had you <laughs> had you been doing IVF? No, we hadn't started IVF yet. We, had, we, were, we were starting, like, thinking about it. And then COVID happened. 
and my book came out. I had to cancel my entire tour. And instead I did an Insta live and like friends and influencers like beamed in yeah, every five this. to 10 minutes. Didn't and Heather McMahon join? Heather was there. Yes. I was so tanked by the end of it because we were drinking tequila the whole time and we got pregnant with Poppy that night. Tequila? <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't Tequila say this, solves so. a lot. Tequila <laughs> really helps things <laughs> sometimes move along. It does. I... I it took me a very long time to get pregnant with my first like a year yeah and you know as you know this well what everyone always tells you when you're having a hard time getting just relax Relax. and it'll happen yeah you're like eat a dick (laughs) eat a dick and so I told him to eat a dick and I did not relax and then I got hammered yeah at a wedding yeah thank you Andy and Kelly (laughs) and bam yeah, it just happened. That was when it finally happened. Like, yeah, it's, it's also like it, I know it's for people listening who's have yet yes, to have. Yes, we are not this, meaning to talk. Yeah, no, know. no. Like this is hard to hear because we are we are very like casual about this. Yes, but to me, like I have to be. Like otherwise, I yep. will not be okay. Like yep. not, nine miss. Like you can't. Your brain. You have to be able to protect yourself in some way. So for me, it's just looking at it as science and finding humor. In the fucking chaotic in the fucking moments chaotic that come with it. Moments. Yeah, I, yeah, nine miscarriages is absolutely absurd and unfair. But and don't so you think you... Taylor should call me and invite me to a yes. show in Europe? You should get the 22 hat. What's the 22 hat? Got me! <laughs> <laughs> this is actually, this is, this is fucked up. It's always <laughs> the 22 hat, okay, during, <laughs> during 22. Uh-huh. She is wearing the, like, sequin booty shorts yeah. and, like, a tacky T-shirt that says some slogan on it. And she's wearing this black hat, like a bowler hat. Yeah. And she's dancing, dancing. And then somebody from the gets audience the gets picked to, like, come up and be, like, standing right at the ba- – and it's always – this is not funny. I'm sorry that I'm laughing. It's always, like, a can- a kid who has cancer oh, yeah. or, like, you know, somebody who, like, something They've really They've done their traumatic. PR research. They, yeah. Yeah. They've done their research, so – I think you. I think I deserve it. Kind of qualify. I mean, listen, where is she playing next? Vienna? I Taylor. don't know. Taylor, do you listen to this podcast? I wonder <laughs> if I could drill down the analytics on that. Hey, Taylor Swift. <laughs> she cooks. If you're listening. She cooks. She she does she's a cook. big cook and I she's know. a baker. I saw somebody did um like Taylor Swift's top three dinner party recipes. What? Didn't you do a Taylor Swift Super Bowl? I sure did. It had yeah. it was, nothing to do with her. It was yeah, literally cares? It was gold. It was gold. Random and made up. It was fantastic. I, I loved had it. One of my best viral recipes during that Taylor Swift week. Uh, I do this like fried brie situation. Yeah. Panko. Ch- ch- fried. So good. And um, what did I call it? You don't know about brie? Something like that. And it had a little viral moment. And people, I had no idea how many people hated Taylor Swift. Oh. But it, as you know, we love the haters. Yeah, I got to love the haters. The more haters. Bring it on, I got baby. like 5,000 new like new followers no. that week. I was like, amazing. bring it, bitches. Oh, that's you so You think fun. I care? I feel like her haters have gotten out of control since the Travis thing, too, because yes. people like really hate on her for the like her NFL takeover. Yes. It's so unfair. But, like, like, I'm so sorry I live. went to a football game. Yeah. What? She just like, she's finally like dating a man. Yes. Like, let her just live a her life. Big, strong man. Yeah. People are so angry about it. Okay, you are a mother and a business owner. Frankly, you own like 15 <laughs> businesses, as we all now know. Someone asked me this a couple years ago, and I thought it was such a good question. If you were to like pie chart break down how you spend your time, how would you do so? And you're good at math, so you can actually give me numbers. I was going to say, yeah. you don't have to give me numbers, but you're actually good at math. So Think about a pie chart of like your average week, Mm -hmm. like so travel not included. How much time are you spending on work? How much time are you spending with family, friends, and then on yourself? Mm. And the time that's on yourself, what are you doing? I know you love to work out. I love to. You love to lift weights. So let's see. I'm awake for like 12-ish hours a day. This is a lot of math. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. You're only awake for 12 hours a day. Yeah, I go to bed really fucking early. I wake up, Poppy and I wake up we, at God, 7. Good job. Seven-ish. Yeah. And she goes down at 7. Okay, I'm not a, I'm not asleep at 7, Working but I'm hours. I'm done. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I am also You're in bed. You're watching Formula. I am watching Formula 1 for two hours <laughs> until 9 p.m. So, like, I'm awake for 14 hours, but I'm functioning for 12 of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work out probably for an hour and a half of that. 
So then that what what I'm down to. Give me your day. Give me your day. And also because Thomas works with you, mm-hmm. tell me a little bit more about like who's watching Poppy. How's okay. all that happening? So we wake up in the morning. 730 is breakfast. We're out the door by 830 at school. And she's school. in school until 130. And yeah. then she comes home and naps until 330. And we have a nanny who like hangs and plays with her in the afternoon until about five. So just an afternoon nanny. She's there all day long. Okay. But like she's with Poppy. Like, you know, we've kept her because yeah. I can't let her go. Yes. But like I have nothing for her to do for the majority of the day because Poppy's in school and I like to do take off and uh, yeah. drop off and pick up. Like I love that. I this love is interesting. That. You're not, uh, I have several friends who are also trying to get pregnant, wanted it to line up perfectly that when they're first went to school, they yeah. would then have a newborn and we they don't. That. And so they have, you tried that. Yeah, we tried. And so they have this nanny who is really a, a huge important part of their life who kind yeah. of doesn't have something to do all day. Okay. No, and I think she's super bored, but like, yeah. w- that's another story for another day. That's just, you have to deal that, do yeah, that sometimes. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, she makes us incredible pupusas once a week. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. So, so anyways, that's Poppy's day. So Poppy's home from about 1.30 till bedtime okay. uh, plus the morning. So of that chunk of time when she's gone at school, I'm working out for about 90 minutes of that. Yeah. And the rest of that is really spent on the website, on social creation, on brand calls. Um, pro- I love talking to brands. Like I get on every phone call with my managers. I want to be a part of every conversation. Yeah. When we talk about money, fine, I'll excuse myself. Like, yeah. I don't need to be there for that. But as far as ideation and, like, concepting goes and yeah. what we think will be successful and what they want compared to what I want and how do we meet in the middle, like, I'm part of all those conversations. Okay. I love my managers, but, like, no one knows my audience like I do. Right. And I make Thomas come into a lot of those calls, too, because he thinks about things from a slightly different angle. Uh-huh. But that's really the only time Thomas and I – are together during the day. Okay. We wear separate offices. Yeah. He's in the guest house. I'm in the main house. And we like, I'll FaceTime him all the time to like get a weigh in on him, but we don't work together. Oh my God. I love that you FaceTime him to the guest house. I love a FaceTime. Yeah. Oh, good to know. People hate it. Oh, I'm, I'm a, that's how I call people. Yes. I don't want to, I don't want to, if I, if I'm on speakerphone, Mm -hmm. I'm not actually paying attention Mm -hmm. to you. Like I have to be looking at you. Yes. So, um, like, my best friend and I will talk for 45 minutes a day on speakerphone, and neither one of us are paying attention yeah, yeah, yeah. to each other. We're just chatting Actively to shoot Actively in each other's <laughs> lives. Yeah. Or, or inactively, I should yeah. say, and, in each other's lives. And, like, if something important comes up, we'll listen, but otherwise yes. we're just both driving or something. <laughs> yes, um, I love that. So I would say – I and then I work you – know, I probably work really diligently for six hours a day. Okay. So, and then the rest of that is hiking with my girlfriends, uh-huh. being with Thomas and Poppy. Does hiking count as a workout? No. Does, should it? I mean, it definitely does for me, but I also, I, I just, it's just about how you use your to time. To me, it's social you know? because like, yeah. I, I used to like go to lunch. I used to do all these things. I don't have time for that. Yes. I want to be moving my body. Yes. Oh my God. I almost invited you on a hike before this. You should have. And then I was like, we're going to look like somebody. That, that would have been funny. Beast. I kind of would have. <laughs> on brand. Next time. Again. Also robes. Next time. Yeah, oh, I know. Next time we hike, we shower. Yeah. And then put on robes. <laughs> I'll get an adjoining room. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I don't remember where um, I was, but. Okay. So you. Oh, it, we were on, you either hike or you... Oh, working. my workouts yes. are like lifting. Like I love lifting yeah. and like cardio. Can you lift for 90 minutes? Well, I so here's my gym. My gym's actually right down the street from here. I get there. I get on the treadmill or Stairmaster or Versa Climber for 20 minutes. Uh-huh. Then I stretch, warm up for 10 minutes. Then I work with my trainer for an hour. How often do you work out with a trainer? Three times a week. That's so badass. Yeah, it's, I, I have. It's my only hobby yeah my my yes. new hobby is um sports yes but but i l- working out is like my one thing i can do for myself every day for my own mental fitness so yep. like when you ask what do you do for yourself that's it yeah <laughs> that's all i do for 100%. and watch tv yeah, yeah 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 yeah. how often are you how do friendships fit into the pie chart um so i, I mean i feel like you're similar i love cooking for people mm-hmm. so i will invite people over all mm-hmm. day long to come over for lunch dinner yep. bring your kids play outside we'll grow Real. Yes. Um, I feel very blessed that I have a lot of friends yeah. that I've met through work and that I've been friends with for my whole life. And yep. some of them are here and some of them aren't. And like no one's high maintenance. Yeah. 
I don't have time for that anymore. God. I feel like having a kid, let alone three kids, like high maintenance friendships are over. Yeah. If you can go three weeks without hearing with me and pick up right where we left off, we're going to be okay. 100%. That is the mark of a true friend. Yeah. When you can pick up the phone and they don't say like, where have you been? How have you been? Yeah. It's or been three weeks. You just pick up. Yeah. You just yeah. like... Hey, I'm, you know. Yeah, it's it's weird otherwise. Like, Should I, I wear this to this event? And they're like, yeah. yeah. And they don't care that you haven't called them in three days. You know what That's else is the what best friend. My favorite is what I don't say hi when I text people. Mm. I just start chatting. Yes. And someone will write back and be like, hey. I'm like, we never <laughs> finished our conversation. So there's no need for pleasantries. <laughs> Matt, my best friend, texted me. He needed something there. And he was like, hi. And I was like, what do you want? Like something <laughs> weird's coming because this <laughs> is not how we communicate. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, we recently renovated our house and before we did so, we, it just like wasn't set up. It wasn't conducive for entertaining. It's yeah. still a really small, you know, we live in California. Yeah. It's still a really small house, but we have a huge yard and the kitchen is now like set up to like, you could really like hang That's in the so kitchen, nice. which is the most yeah. important part when you're the cook. Um, and we, just have people over all the time. Yeah. And so we moved back in in November and George was like, I feel like we're so social all of a sudden. Like we we hang out with people like all the time. I was like, yeah, that's because we're having them over because it's impossible to do anything else. There's this How do one you go vineyard. Out with kids? There's this one vineyard called Folktale yeah. near our house. The wine is subpar at best, <laughs> but the food is great. And they have this huge grassy lawn that is gated in huge so the kids run wild sometimes wild we bring banshees. remote control cars stop it that's genius and just let them rip that's so, so we meet nice. friends there yeah or we meet friends at houses that's the best way to do Those it are the only way yeah to like i just out. no one ever invites me over you know we don't get invited over a ten it's either really sad people always are like I, we'll I'm come to your house yeah and i'm yeah. sure you get this people are intimidated to cook for me yeah why and I'm though? like in what fucking world do i look like i would be Oh, I don't love that. I like Kraft oh, mac and cheese. Exactly. Fucking as long as I'm not cleaning, I love I shit am food. Thrilled. Yes. <laughs> I like and then when the people come, I will say the one thing that's tricky with the people coming to our house all the time is when kids come over, I don't know do your kids friends friends kids do this? It's like they take the Lego thing and they just dump it on the ground. Yes. Why do they do that? It's, bi- it's wild because we're what? very organized. Yes, Poppy puts her I shit away. Oh, see, I don't, I don't know that world. <laughs> Must be fucking nice. My kids have never put away anything in their but lives. Like, uh, it's really upsetting when they're yeah, they, yeah, yes, that's tough. But I, I just keep it all outside. I don't yeah. let kids run around our house. Yeah, that not the inside. Us. Okay, tell us about grilling all the things. Oh yes. So, uh, do you listen to Pod Save America? Have nope. you heard of it? It's, a, it's like a political it. podcast. Uh, the guys who founded it have this media company called Crooked Media. He used to be Obama's speechwriter. He's amazing, John. But his wife, Emily, is Ooh. like everything. And she's one of my very dear friends. And like three years ago, she texted me and she was like, can you teach me how to grill a piece of chicken? Like, I'm scared to turn on my grill. And I was like, Really? I was like, yeah, sure, come on over. People are so scared to turn on the grill. Well, like, I can't, I was always scared to leave. Well, I used to be a private chef, mm-hmm. and I would oh, yeah, forget I to that. turn the grill off when mm. I left my client's house, and I was always scared I was going to burn their house down. Yeah, that's that. That's a reasonable not great. fear. Yeah. But, um, anyways, Emily came over and asked the most basic questions on how to grill and the response on instagram live and on dms she was, was there wild with yeah you? we like did this whole insta That's live so together on a monday yeah, yeah, yeah. night we should do it together next yeah, yeah, time yeah. either of us are in each other's city but i was like oh my god people don't know how to grill mm-hmm. and it's such a man's thing like quote on i'm using air quotes for that because it's so fucking relaxing you get to go outside Gobby, i have i have also <laughs> educated my audience about this yeah it's the reason the men like to grill is because you get to go outside and be alone for 30 minutes those little fuckers yeah exactly and you're just (laughs) left in that house with those wild children running around i guess i'm a full-time babysitter now yeah all these children that i happen to have that's why the men like to grill so we i like i did this into live with emily i call my editor and i was like is there like a market for grilling Uh books get this of like, let's say, let's just make up numbers. Let's say there are 50,000 cookbooks published a year. I believe it. <laughs> and uh, 4,000 of them are about grilling. One of them is written by a woman a year. 
Shut up. One. And they're all like, oh my God, whole another thing hog. I'm going to copy you on. Yeah. <gasps> whole hog. Yes. Big format meat. Things that Smokers. take hours and hours yeah. and hours to make. And I was like, that's bullshit. Like, what I really want is to get dinner on the table on a Wednesday night yes. when, the, when the sun's out and I can go outside and make this beautiful dinner, grilled pork, grilled chicken, beef, veggies, whatever, pizza, yes. and I'm done in 30 minutes. Because, okay, guess what? In addition to being outside by your freaking self for 30 minutes, mm-hmm. you also don't have to clean anything up. Yeah. People don't think about that. People the cleanup is don't, a game changer. Literally, your grill can be covered in salmon. If you made a little mistake, maybe there's some chicken skin yeah, stuck on there. Or if you didn't, crank that baby up. Burn it off, This baby. is when you almost burn down your client's houses yeah. or your own house. I will do the full crank to set clean. A timer. Set yeah, a timer. Set a timer. <laughs> George is like, do you know the grill is like, like 17,000 degrees. It's glowing red. <laughs> <laughs> One time when uh, George was at, uh, what's it called? Not boarding school, grad school <laughs> in Palo Alto, a very, you know, yeah. Silicon Valley. All these guys had rented this huge, like super fancy house up in Woodside, which is like a very fancy area. And of anytime we had dinner parties, I, of course, am put in charge of cooking. And it's like one of our last nights, we have like 30 people. I get like $500 of really good salmon and I'm grilling it. And shocker, these dodos have <laughs> never cleaned the grill oh. so i put truly i think like 500 dollars of really good salmon oh, no. like it's a huge grill put it on clothes and i look out two minutes later fire and fire oh my it's god going there's up fire. there's there's ivy up the side of this beautiful woodside <laughs> house it is trickling up the ivy full grease fire no um no fire hydrant what did so, you yeah, do we're like trying to make people feel confident about grilling and <laughs> <laughs> Listen, key number one, you got to clean out clean the your grease. grill. You got to clean the grease. We have ours professionally cleaned once a year. You have to. Yeah. Someone because comes over and takes all that shit out. If right you before don't do season. it professionally, you're not going to do it. Well, and your grill won't last as long. And your grill won't last as long. Yeah. It'll get holes, corroded yeah. holes in it. So, yeah, basically, we how did we solve the fire? Like, I think, did like, the fire department come? I think, like, no, I think, like, they had to go. Yeah, they, like, went down in the basement and found a fire hydrant and we even should oh put it out. Oh, my God. That's insane. Salmon. Poor the salmon. salmon. That's the most devastating the part. salmon was gone. Yeah. Okay, so the book comes out in May. Book comes out in May. All about grilling, easy, approachable recipes, empowering. Are there desserts on the grill? Yes, Everything there are. on the grill? Everything is on the grill, but there's also really like fun. it is very easy to use a grill pan. If you don't have a grill, you can yes. do everything on a grill pan inside or in your oven if we're talking desserts. That's so. an interesting um, point about this cookbook is that people will see it and like you'll lose. Yeah. Of course, You'll right lose away. A lot of people. I've already gotten DMs. I'm not I a griller. Grill. I don't. I, I'm not comfortable. Okay, that's totally fine. You do everything on a grill pan inside. It's yeah. still just a hundred plus epic recipes yeah. that are just enhanced by yeah. grilling. Or like, let me fucking teach you how to grill. Yeah, but you know, there's some people who are never going to be okay with that. Like, yeah. and that's okay. They just want to live in their bubbles, and that's yeah. fine. I don't. If you're one of those people and you're listening, like, really. It's, You're invited it, over to my house. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a grilling party. Maybe yeah. that's the dinner party that yeah, we'll we host should. together. That would be so a fun. grilling party. We could just have an epic hotel hosted and bring in like 10 yes. Webers yes. and set up stations. That's it. Yeah. You know how to but do it. But like this. it's, you know, it, whatever. I'm sure some people won't buy it, but that's okay. Like yeah. I, what I'm there for is to teach the people who want to be empowered yeah. how to grill and what to make for their families. Empowering is a word with grilling. I have to say like. It, when we're over at a friend's house or something, it's always the man on the grill. And mm-hmm. at our house, I am the master of yeah. the grill 100 percent because it's just the quickest and easiest thing ever. Yeah. And people like don't get that. They think no. it's scary because it's fire or something. Yeah, I get it. I, I mean, I, I don't, but I do. It's like, I easiest. understand. Like, so whatever. The book comes out in May. We're going on a book tour. I think we'll do 10 cities. It'll be It'll be fun. I want you to come to Carmel, but you never will. We'll we'll probably do the Bay Area. Okay. We haven't even planned California yet. Like the rest of tour is pretty much planned, but California, like California is easy for me. Like I could call Margo and be like, let's have a party. And she'd help me figure out a place to do it. So we'll do California. We'll figure that out later. Yeah. Margo. God, we love you, Margo. So much. What's something you gave us your kind of full schedule? What's something as a working mom that is like, working really well for you right now like the kind of thing that you like tell your other mom friends like have you tried this like Mm. this is working really well for us god that's such a great question it changes every week like i feel like motherhood is so fluid oh it's literally and one thing that works one week doesn't Doesn't work work the next all the next week poppy really loves uh 
being involved. Like she wants to participate. She wants to set the table. She wants to season the salmon. Like she wants to do all those things. So I give her tasks. Yeah. And that is working for us right now. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I do that for myself too. Like if I'm like procrastinating because I have so much to do, I'm like, here are the 10 things that need to be done today. Mm -hmm. Make myself a list and I will go do them. I'm a task oriented person. Do you have with these billions of businesses you have, do you have a personal (laughs) assistant who comes to the house? No. I really, I really should. Do you have a personal assistant at all? No. What? (laughs) No, I have no one full time except for Thomas and I. I have a lot of help contractor wise. Uh Like Matt is the most amazing best friend and photographer and creative director. Adam, his husband, is like a culinary director, food stylist and like therapist. They do all of the visuals. Yep. But no one's full time. And they do all your books, too. Yes. It's so yeah. fun. They do everything. Every Dalkin & Co., they shoot everything for Dalkin & Co. Like, I couldn't function without them. When we sold our book, when most people sell a book, the publishers are like, who are your top five photographers? With Abrams, it was like, this is who's shooting my book. This is who's styling it. If you have a problem, we will sell somewhere yeah, else. And they were like, Matt and Adam are just the fucking best. I that is them. completely true. I can back that up. My editor was very specific about, like, who she wanted me to work with. Yeah. And so, they have, yeah. People have a lot. Lot of opinions on it, but I feel very lucky I have them. But no, no one full time, and I probably need to figure that out before book tour because I, I actually might need someone to come with me, and it's not Thomas. Yeah, no, 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 it's not Thomas. Yeah, that's wild to me. So you, you like all of your content, everything you posted all yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. don't even do that. Control and I have freak. about a tenth of the. No, I am <laughs> just unwell do. on the inside. <laughs> yeah, I will say I get I hear that a lot from creators that they're like total control freaks. I feel very lucky that I not. am not that. It's, it's healthy. Are you like a type A? You're like, going to live longer. Really, <laughs> <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> yeah, I I genuinely am like put up a new banner on my website. And yeah. they're like, what do you want it to look like? And I'm like, colors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they're like, OK, I, my team's like, you need a new logo for this. I'm like, OK, do figure it, it out. <laughs> That's amazing. But also amazing that you have a team that can do that. Yeah. Like I, my team is yeah. curated in a way where like creative is not on their to do list. Uh-huh. You know, like that is very much me, Thomas, Matt and Adam. Uh-huh. And like, I actually don't think I could allow someone to do that because like we have such a well oiled four person machine with that. Yeah. My team is more on the like business and logistical mm-hmm. and ops side of mm-hmm. things. What are your like when you think about your legacy, like you in, at 70, what's the reason for all this? Like, why are you doing all this? I want everyone to be fearless in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I think if I can help people feel confident cooking for themselves, their partners, their families, their friends, whoever, then I will have done my job. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. It's like such a skill. I feel like our generation got kind of screwed on the cooking front. Mm -hmm. Eating is like a fundamental life source. We all have to eat. And to eat, you have to cook. But like somewhere it got lost in translation. Like, I don't know if feminism did this to us. I don't know what happened. But like the art of cooking just got dropped. Yeah. Like it's like when microwaves and women are entering the workplace, like it kind of all happened. And like the ability to cook, learning the skill of cooking got so interesting. I never thought about why that was. Yeah. But you're right. Right? Yeah. And maybe it has something to do with more women working and working longer and having families later. And there's so many incredible fast casual places to take out from. Maybe that's all part of it. I think that's all a part of it. I also think there's a little bit of like with women in the workforce, at least I know many of my friends are like, I don't have time to cook. Like, no, I work. Yeah. And I'm like, I work too, but I do. You you can find time to cook if you want it to. I think there's a little bit. Bit. Sometimes, I and mean, this definitely isn't the full reason, but I think there's a little bit of like an ego or um, something. I don't know if ego is even the right word, but where women are like, no, I work, so I'm not yeah, also going to be the be cook of the family. That. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. Have you, Thomas, done the fair play method? No, Do you know what that, that is? No, but is this a quiz? It's sort of. It's a book, it's mm-hmm. cards, like literally a deck of cards. And there's also a Netflix documentary. It's started by this woman, Eve Rodsky. She's coming on the podcast. And it's basically a way to divide the labor in your home. Cool. So, 
for instance, this morning, George was frantically calling me because our nanny was out. So I had somebody else coming at eight. Well, guess what? She didn't show up at eight. George doesn't even have that person's number. So he's frantically calling me. I'm trying to work out before you get here. And literally, if we, we did this a week ago, so eight days ago, if he'd been calling me on my business trip, frantically asking me where the babysitter was, I would have been like, fuck off, George. Figure yeah. it out yourself. Call her. But we basically it gives you the ability to like clearly divide who is responsible for what. Yeah. And you don't just own it sometimes. You You're own responsible it fully. for child care. And I am child care. And George is so many things. Yeah. Like he's cars, he's taxes, he's cool. Mortgage. He's fair play. Fair play. And I'm so like now <laughs> I it's so incredible. Like I don't touch the more the mortgage. I don't touch like all of these things. Like booking the kids um doctor's appointments like all these things I don't touch but so he so I this morning I think I would have been really pissed eight days ago but I was like you're right this is my yeah responsibility. Here's her let me no not even let me call her oh my god amazing and I felt no resentment cool and it felt so good to not whoa I'm ordering this deck today really helpful it's literally a deck of cards each one says something and you divide them up Write them down. Wow. Of course, like, you know, when Poppy goes off to school, when you have this next you change baby, it. you change it. Uh -huh. You switch it around. Yeah. But like, for now, it's so helpful. Whoa. Yep. I love that. That's what I'm really into mind. right now. Okay, wait. You just blew my mind. Let's talk about the things we're really into right now. Mine is that when I travel, you're, a, you're like really good at working out. You know how to do it yourself. I am a follower. So... I'm a Peloton person. Uh -huh. I love it. I hop on. I, I press a button. You have a My workout's instructor. done in 35 minutes. I got Emma. I got Allie. Like, I'm done. Yeah. You know? So I book hotels now when I'm traveling Peloton. that have Peloton. <gasps> That's I so walk into the gym. Smart. I know exactly what to do. My workout's over in 45 minutes. That's brilliant. It's so That's nice. such a life hack. I thank you. I'm really impressed by that. And like, I literally felt so empowered walking into the gym this morning. I was like, I know exactly what to do. Pff, log in. Done. Yeah. Good what, for you. Thank you. What are you into? Um, I'm in. Well, I mean, I'm I'm just really into Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We talked about it before this <laughs> recording started. Honest. Will you tell us the coolest brand thing ever that happened to you related to Formula One? Yeah. Give so, us the story. so last August, I was I wake up I wake up at like seven, but uh -huh. like I'm awake at six and I'll check my phone and I'll like power through emails and then I'll kind of fall back asleep. So at six o'clock, that I sounds wake, really healthy. Okay. It's, <laughs> listen, I told you I'm not well. I'm not well on the inside, but I wake up and then I'm not interested in my email until Poppy goes to school. Okay, okay. Otherwise, okay. I'd be okay. like, I'd want to check it. You know. You know? So all right, I'm not well. I'm I'm totally okay with it. <laughs> but I get this email. I wake up at six in the morning, and this email came in at like two in the morning, and I was like, "Who the fuck is emailing me at two in the morning?" It's Aston Martin. It's Italy calling. Yeah, well, but they're based in England, so Other I'm like, England. "Okay, cool." And sure. they're like, "Hey, Gabby, we recently saw that you're a huge Drive to Survive fan, and you're really obsessed with Formula One. Would you want to come on an all expenses paid trip?" I actually, got so much hate for this on Reddit, but I'm so glad we're talking about it. Would you want to come on an all expenses paid trip to Lake Como for the Formula One race in Monza. And I was like, fuck yes. And Ooh, I, I write yes. back literally instantly. Well, that's not true. I screenshot it and sent to my managers who know I'm obsessed with Formula One. And I'm like, holy fuck, it's the best day of my life. I uh, like it's happening. It's you guys. like you guys, I've man, I manifested yes. this. I believe in manifesting for sure. And I for sure manifested this. Incredible. So I'm like, hey, guys, this is so cool. Totally. And can I bring my husband? Yeah. I didn't ask about Poppy because like, I know that's not a place for her. And they write me back moment, like minutes later. Absolutely not. Like this is there. The paddock is like at capacity. The paddock. Yeah. And I was like, OK, no problem. Here's here's my all my information. Here's my frequent flyer, Delta my number, social security entry. number. <laughs> What else do you need? Driver's license. <laughs> take it. And so I went. Birth certificate. What else I take do you my want? identity. I don't fucking care at this point. This is so cool. And I get on a plane a month later and I fly to Italy to go to the Formula One race. And I'm on the ground. I'm pretty sure for less than 70 hours. Oh. And I had the time of my life. Yeah. I had, this is like, this is your passion. This is my hobby. You, yeah, this like, is your hobby. I am obsessed with Drive to Survive. I'm obsessed with the politics behind the teams. Uh -huh. I'm obsessed with the drivers and the, the um, oh my God, now I'm blanking on what the 
shit, what are all the team principles? Team like, principles. T- yeah, it's like the coach, basically the guy in charge of like running everything. Toto Wolf and his wife Susie are my favorite What's people. What's his name? Toto Wolf. Hot. He's this like dapper <laughs> billionaire who is in charge of Mercedes and his wife is in yep. charge of Formula One for women. It's so fucking cool. Oh, I saw this. That She's a badass. Yeah, there's Susie. now Formula One for women. And Charlotte Tilbury yes. is a sponsor. Yeah, yes. big deal. Big cool. things are happening in the Formula oh, One world. Wait, you need to get in with Charlotte Tilbury. I do. Dream, dream. Yeah. So I go to Charlotte, Italy. Are you listening? Yeah, please call Charlotte me. and Taylor. Are you I'm listening? really good at doing my makeup. <laughs> yeah, you are. No, I'm really good. Really good. Uh, I don't wear makeup. I don't. Oh. Like m- once a week. Shh. <laughs> She's kidding, Charlotte. So, I'm kidding. I love makeup. <laughs> She's wearing a face full of makeup right now. <laughs> so uh, I go to Italy and like we are content creators. Like we need a better name because we do so many other things. I know. Like I run seven businesses, yeah. but like content creation is a big part of it. And sometimes you forget how fun it can be Mm -hmm. when like there's, uh, so Aston gave me absolutely no deliverables, no expectations. They were like, just come. Have a blast. Have a ball, babe. And I must have done 175 Insta stories in the three days that I was there. I remember it. I just remember being like, how, what? It was, it was honestly, it was my favorite content I made last year. And it was just because it was so real and there were, there was nothing I had to say. Yes. And obviously people were like, this is an unattainable trip, but like, would you say no to a free trip to Italy to go to Formula One? So, no. Not to talk too much about trolls, because what's the fucking point? (laughs) But the fact that somebody would even say to you, this is such an unattainable trip, like, duh. Yeah, of course I'm in Italy for 70 hours. With a billion dollar car brand. And an (laughs) Aston Martin picked me up at the airport. It's truly you think un- I don't know how absurd this yeah, is? Yeah, I know I look like an asshole. Like, I feel like an asshole and I'm loving it. And I'm loving it. And it's a brand paying me to do it. In what world would I not take this trip? Yeah, it was really, it was, it was really the best three days of my yeah. entire life. And what was so cool about that is I think brands who look outside of the box, like yes. I am not a car person. Could I tell you how fast an Aston goes? Yes. Nope. Could I tell you what it's made out of? Nope. But the fact that they were like, there's food part of Formula yeah. One, and she's such a fan of like the sport and the politics behind all of it, we're going to reach out to her yep. outside of so all the like smart. typical fashion cars people we do was so brilliant yeah. in my mind because you reach a whole different audience. Yeah. I mean, I think that was so smart, but the smartest thing they did was not give you any objectives oh, yeah. of what to talk about. When a brand is like, their deliverables list is a mile long yes. for like a one minute reel. I'm like, in what world is this ever going to sound like me? Yeah, that's the best brand partnerships. They're like, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Just make cool make content. Make us sound good. Yeah. Make yeah. cool content. And here, we're going to give you an incredible weekend where you can make content yes. and do whatever you want. And we're going to give it, we're going to lay it all out for you and you do what you do with it. Yep. It was yeah. the best. It was the best weekend. Yeah, that's incredible. Okay, well, so Formula One in general. <laughs> that's what I'm into. Is what you're into. <laughs> and this is like a long standing passion now. Yeah, it's been at least a year. I have to say, I think kind of the point of uh, so into that is to like convince me, convince the listeners, and you've convinced me. I'm going to get home and I'm going to f- season flip it one, on. episode one. It's, it's I'm gonna kind of housewife. Total wolf. But without the yelling, like the yeah. sheer amount of cash they dump into Formula One is a spectacle. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so fun. it's really interesting. And they fly all over the world. They're in these cool places. There are only 20 drivers. So you get to know these personalities really well. Are they? Wait, is that one team? There are tw- there are 10 teams, two drivers per team. It's really two drivers per team. Yeah. And they're not teammates. They are, but they are competing against each other. So it is like, it is every man for himself okay, this or is herself. It is, vi- I'm obsessed with it. But I am in my sports era, so that's what I'm into yeah, right yeah, yeah. now. Oh, yeah, I saw, I'm sure Reddit hated this for you, too, that you got to go on the field at LA Galaxy. Yeah, I, haven't, to- I, haven't, I try not to look at Reddit too often. Do but you like, look? Oh, yeah. <gasps> well, but people send me things all the time about, uh, like, I, like, I look for other things. Yeah. And then I, like, randomly find stuff about myself. But, yeah, I check it out. Wow, no, I Do can't. you not? Oh, I, I didn't know it existed. Oh. We're talking about something called Reddit uh, <laughs> blogger snark. I don't called? even know what snark, the subs are snark. called. I don't the food the food snarks are not where I like like to hang out. Like I like I to can't like look you at can hang out at any of this. the New York influencers and socialites. Like I'm it's just like so funny to see what people say about it. For the most part, I think Reddit's like they're fucking undercover spies and they're smart. Yes, but like when you see yourself pop up, it's a little alarming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my one of my best friends from high school like set up this whole 
system for me so that I was getting an alert anytime I got mentioned on the internet, which oh neither God, of us, this is, this is two months ago, neither oh. of us thought that, we thought, she was like, you know, if you get, if the Today Show mentions one of your recipes, because like that had happened a few times where like a cool would mention me and I somehow wouldn't even see it. I was like, oh, genius. Thanks. She's really into AI. So mm-hmm. she was setting it up with some robot. Yeah. And she sets it up and the first thing that pops up, I've never talked about this because it traumatized <laughs> me, but now it's like you're funny miscarriage. It's therapy. It's, now it's funny. therapy. The first thing that pops up and we're standing there together in her office in San Diego and she's like, oh, I've done this. Like, watch, watch. I've set all this up. Pops up. Oh my God. I'm so nervous like, for you. Reddit is Caro Chambers, our Caro Chambers and her husband Swingers. No. <laughs> Amazing. And I was, oh. she was like, do you, she was like, what, what? She was like, oh, fuck, what compliment. have I done? What have I done? It's and a I was like, oh, my God, what is this? And it's like, I I just went on a friend trip with, like, six of my couple friends. And we always do, oh, my God, it was right before Christmas. And we have this weekend, our group of friends. And we always call it Sexy Santa. And, like, it's just one of those jokes that, like, really has no background. But because it's called Sexy Santa, Gray bought, like, all these, like, Sexy Santa suits and made the guys wear them. So I had said something, like, there were too many sexy outfits, so I can't post any more pictures. Amazing. Somebody took that as we were all having sex with each other. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then, you know, you scroll down and it's like, I used to love Caro Chambers, but she's gotten so annoying lately. (laughs) And they hate when we get free things. Things. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get it. They, Part of it's a yeah. jealousy thing. Yeah. Like I it's, like I get jealous when I see people totally. doing cool things, too. Like, oh God, that's I was just so human jealous nature. of you in, in Aston Martin, Italy. <laughs> Listen, Thomas was, too. <laughs> there was literally Thomas was no like, one I'm who not wasn't. watching your stories. This is upsetting. And I'm like, cool. I've been talking about it for four weeks when I get home. I can't believe that you can look at your own Reddit. So I. I well, you know who reads my Reddit? It's I don't have my own Reddit. Thank God. Like, because. But cause you know who monitors it? If you don't know it? what we're talking about, there are some creators influencers who have entire pages dedicated to people hating on them matt checks it for me and matt responds a lot like there was Stop. something recently they I were like love gobby's, that he responds. gobby's annoying and a mean girl and he responded he's like she's definitely annoying for sure i can be annoying but a mean girl she is not like i wouldn't be friends with her if she was mean and he sent it to me and i was like yeah you're right i can be fucking annoying yeah, like but, i get it but i mean, walk in that studio with my fucking clipboard and he's yep. like you are so we're are gonna get all so your shots annoying. you're fine but like he's like you're just categorically not a mean yeah. girl like <laughs> so i had to say false. something yeah <laughs> i actually i will say and i'm sure you're never supposed to respond to these things i'm sure it got like so much hate that I responded, but I did. Did you respond to the swingers? I did. Amazing. I went on and I, cause it was, cause it was the swingers and then just tons of mean, like Caroline's yeah. annoying, Caroline, you know, whatever, like just weird, weird things. And I was like, I have to say the snark, the, the swinger thing actually made me laugh. Yeah. But the rest of this is just sad. Are you guys okay? <laughs> Oh my God! You were saying they? you every now and then you respond. To I a do hater. respond every now and yeah. then. I can't remember what I did recently. Or not on Reddit, but on like if you well, get a I'll bitchy respo- DM. If I get a bitchy DM, I well, you know, I used to screenshot it and black out their name and post it. Yes. And then one of my very best friends, Jerry, her husband Darren, was like, "Why are you blacking out these people's names, yeah. Bobby? Like you can't, you can't." contribute to them just being mean and living and uh-huh. so now I don't black out their names. You just blast their names. No, nope, yep. Do you think people out there. DM them and are like, what is wrong with you? I know they do. Yeah. So one woman, this was a couple years ago, made fun of my lisp. Like I have a lisp. It's nothing. It, I'm just lazy. I get too excited and I talk too fast. And this woman made fun of my Ma- lisp and what a fuck. It yeah, it's hap- it happens like once every six months. It's sure. fine. It doesn't affect sure. me. Cause like if I went to speech therapy, which I did as a child well, I went once. I dropped out. I was like, "This is not fucking for me." Uh, I'm bored of this. I'm so I have way better <laughs> things I could do. I if I think really carefully and slowly, I can get rid of it. Yeah. But I don't have time for that. Yeah. Anyways, this woman DMs me, and I didn't put her on blast. I was with a friend who put her on blast, and she uh, had to shut down her Instagram because people were like, "That's so mean." Like, what if something had happened to Gabby as a child and she was in an accident and this is what transpired and this is why she yeah. has a list? Like, you just don't know. I don't know. So, like, yeah, yeah, I do think people DM them sometimes. I think most people probably do it in a very constructive, criti- critically uh-huh. way, but like, they're definitely not all those people. Yeah, but then they are <laughs> understanding what it's like to get a yeah, lot. Yeah, it of, doesn't feel good. A lot of I also don't DMs think people yourself. like. Do you read all your DMs? I. 
you're having a day where you have a ton of DMs because yeah. you posted something that a lot of people responded to. When I have the days where it's I open and it's 500 DMs because yeah. I've said something that's something that everyone responds to, I don't. Yeah, it's but hard otherwise, to... on the on the days where it's a typical amount, I try to still respond to them all. I'm Me still too. in the hundreds. You respond to all of them mm-hmm. personally, you and usually with a million voice followers. Note. Yeah, oh. <laughs> crazy. Oh yeah, I do voice notes Again, too. Not well. Oh my god, I love that you do voice notes too. But the voice I always note, am like these. I'm people driving. Must think I'm crazy. Usually. Me too. And it's like it's easier for me to tell you what I'm like. Someone DM me this morning. How do I sign up for a What's Gobby cooking retreat? It's just easier for me to tell you in a yeah. 10 second voice note than to yes. type it. Yes. And like I'm not allowed to drive and text, but like, can I drive and voice note? Oh, 100. <laughs> percent I know. Oops. Don't listen to us, kids. Don't drive and voice notes. <laughs> Bad examples. It, do as we say, you know, not as we you, do. You pull it up at the traffic light yeah. and then you do it. It's just hard to not it. do it. It's really Whatever, fun. it is fine. And like, it's such dead time, those times yeah. in the car. I have a Volvo. It's a very safe car. <laughs> I can't believe you still try to respond to every single DM. But like, it's you have a almost customer a million service. followers. Like, it's my job is customer service. Yeah. Like, I'm teaching people to cook and they're becoming fearless in the kitchen and yeah. I have to be. If someone's at the store. Yeah, I know. I know. I want to be able to respond to them. So I immediately respond when I get a what to cook my sub stack. Uh-huh. Those come like straight through as the notifications. Email. And it's always like somebody's at the store. They're out of blah, blah, blah. Sure. What do I get? It's been in for 20 minutes and it hasn't cooked through yet. What do I do? Those I am like Johnny on, on. the spot. Mm-hmm. But the others... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, sometimes things go go through the cracks and yeah. like it's four hours later and they made banana bread four hours. <laughs> like there's no helping <laughs> yeah, them yeah, at yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah. But I try to be as responsive as humanly possible. Uh-huh. I don't do it when I'm around Poppy. Yes. I'm off my phone when she's like when we're together, when we're watching TV, when we're at the park, I try to not be on my phone. Does that work? Mm, sometimes. Depends. If I'm solo with her and Thomas yeah. isn't there, yes. Yeah. I'm I'm attentive. If we're both there... Or, like, she's not really paying attention to me and wants to do her own thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I can get distracted mm-hmm. and do it. I'm just thinking about the most recent picture you posted of Poppy. And I have a funny question for you. And I swear I'm not a celebrity, like, wait. person at all. Like, <laughs> I know celebrities are literally just like us. But your friendship with Mandy Moore <laughs> boggles my mind. Because we're the same age, I think, 34-ish. You and Mandy? Yeah. No, you and I. Oh, yeah. I'm 36. Okay. Yeah. And Mandy's also our age. She's going to turn 40 this year. Oh! Ooh, yeah, God, baby face. Hater. I know. She just is like also perfect and beautiful and like will look forever young. So point being, we grew up in the Mandy Moore generation. Correct. We knew every word to yeah. candy, baby. Oh my God, I fucking love candy. We watched A Walk to Remember. She was the first concert I ever went to. Okay. Yeah. This is my question. Because I feel like if you were friends with like, I don't know, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, I'd be like, cool. Yeah. Normal. But like <laughs> Mandy Moore was like, we grew up with her. Yeah, I know. Is that funny that like you're one of your dear friends is was your first concert? Here's what's so funny about it. You said it. They are quite literally normal people. Yeah. So like I uh, like in L.A., I work out at a gym where there are a lot of celebrities. Like I have a lot of I've met a lot of people through work. Yeah. That are famous. Like they're just so normal. Yeah. And like, uh, listen, I think I probably crave friendship like more than even us. Honestly. Yeah. And like they like I just find Hollywood to be so fake. Yeah. And a lot of people only care what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. And like that's not fun to be friends with someone like that. I've met people like that who want things from me. And they just want to like hit it in the blog world or social media Mm -hmm. world. And I'm like, I don't want like I get it. Like I just want friends who are real good Mm -hmm. friends. So it's not weird because they're she she would sit right here and have an incredible conversation with us and shoot the shit. We'd have three glasses of wine deep and have the best afternoon of our lives. Um, Well, Mandy would have two because she has self-control. I would have three. I have none. Three, four. (laughs) Send another bottle up, please. They're just, you know, really, it's, it was. Stars are just like Mandy and I became close because we had our kids right after, like at the same time. So we got really close during COVID because we, you know, just were doing the same things. Uh We were in the same mom group, blah, 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 blah. But she's just like an angel. Yeah. She's quite literally the nicest person yeah. I know. I know that's the darkest I question. I don't know. But I was like, Mandy Moore, it was like our youth. Yeah. We were at a party once at Emily's house at Favreau, the girl I was talking about earlier. Uh-huh. And someone drunkenly requested candy. Mandy and I were there. And she was mortified. And I was like, it's a fucking banger. Lean in. Yes. Like, it's so good. Yes. I love that like, song. Like, be Taylor Swift at the nightclub in Vegas singing oh my along God, to yeah. your own living, songs, Mandy. Living her best life. Get up on the stage and sing so Candy. Funny. Candy's God, a great song. It's such a good song. Yeah. You're also friends with Heather McMahon. And Die for her. I loved her uh, when she went to the 
Oh, no, Mandy Moore came to her show. Yeah, I took Mandy and Hillary oh, you to Heather's show. Yeah. Oh, you went, you took her. And she like did something on her podcast that was just like her singing for three minutes straight, like <laughs> but the then, candy song. I it's put so Mandy, good. I put Mandy and Heather on a text chain and I was like, if you guys don't do something together yes. next time you're in town, this is a missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. I the know. people are de- craving it. It would be incredible. Dying for it. Um, okay, what's something that you are out on right now? out on oh you know this is this is controversial let's go protein oh like my the, god great the obsessive, okay like uh, this i'm saying this because i was shamed out not putting protein in poppy's lunch this morning what'd She's you give her three. for what'd you give her for lunch i gave her a kachui pepe minus the pepe cucumbers and avocado tossed with lemon and olive oil and salt golden raisins berries a uh, Tillamook piece of cheese and pita. It was a the fucking gourmet fact lunch. <laughs> that somebody decided that they needed to find fa- fault with that. Uh, but here's the deal. Your three year old eating out, cacio it, e pepe it at It goes preschool. outside this because every video yes, I watch on TikTok is like, this is my high protein yes. this. This is my yes. high protein that. High and protein I'm like, peanut butter, chocolate chip dip, high protein. Yeah, and I'm like, my high protein salad. If I yeah. see one more fucking cottage cheese yeah. ice cream, I'm going to scream, just enjoy the ice cream. Yes. Like, it's okay that not yes. everything is so protein. Heavy. Yeah, so that's what I'm out of. Love out that. On. I am a cottage cheese lover. Have Same. been forever. What brand? Good culture, of course. Obviously, yeah. Love it. I feel like this. I feel like we. I've been scooped. Yeah. Like I'm like no cottage cheese was is just you it just eat cool. it out of the container. <laughs> you don't mix it with chocolate chips and peanut butter protein. <laughs> you eat it out of the container. Yeah. Five big scoops yeah. on your way to the gym. Throw it in a lasagna. Throw Something. it in the lasagna. Oh my god, I love a lasagna, a cottage cheese I lasagna. Do too. My mom makes it with cottage cheese. She just yes. uses ricotta. The good culture double cream, the green one. The best. Wow. I know. Have you ever worked with them? No. I I've haven't. tried so many times. They reached out to me once and oh, they're they're peace off. they uh they their email was hey there instead of hey gobby. And I was like, Ooh, that's a that's a because it was a blast. Yeah, like they were just sending it to a hundred different people, but uh-huh. I'm like, you can't say hey there. Mm-mm. You there's there is AI to formulate that for whoever's email you're sending. Literally, it. like it's been around for twenty years. In fact, <laughs> I don't even think they called it AI back then. I think they just called it Mailchimp. Good Correct. culture. Anyway, good culture. If you would send us both a personal still, email, still a fan, but I need that yeah, personalized I'm, email. <laughs> shoot us an email with our names in it. Um, that's a great one. Yeah, I. After having my third kid, was like, okay, I'm ready to like really get back in my fitness, get my, you know, I don't know, back, get my head back, get my body back. And everyone who I would talk to about this would just tell me to hit these protein goals. Mm-hmm. And I was like obsessing over it at, when I yeah. first started this like journey last April or so, trying to get like 100 grams of protein in my day. I was like counting it and I was finally like, what am I doing? doing yeah like i feel the same but it's like a trend right now it's a trend yeah and like we have to eat protein to build muscle sure. like that for sure has been the case for 100 years plus but like get over it yeah like also just like eat some fruit it's not gonna make you fat yeah like I, so when people are like you put a whole banana in your smoothie without protein powder you're gonna die tomorrow and i'm like but blueberries aren't gonna make me yeah. fat nor is a banana yeah 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 <laughs> and i'm gonna die happy because the smoothie didn't taste Thank like god collagen powder <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, what's something other than this entire pod? What's something other than your traumatic miscarriage that made you laugh really hard recently? <laughs> your IRL. LL. Um, what's something that made me laugh recently? I love this because I feel like I, as a working mom, sometimes my days are like work mom, work mom, and like yeah. that's all I do. And so I like to think back of like what, what really made you got giggle? me going lately. God, I feel like I had a laugh attack a couple days ago, and now I'm totally blanking on what it was. I don't know. Probably <laughs> Poppy talking about her toots. Like, she's, she calls herself a toot monster. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, how did you, who taught you that? Yep. It's so weird. Like, yep. the things that come out of her mouth make me laugh. Yeah, she's getting to that really good age where they say the funniest shit all the time. It's so, she, wait, she just turned three, is yeah. that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, I have... My Callum is three and a half, and he makes us laugh all day long. Yeah, they right look now. like so much fun. Yeah. I want them to hang out with Poppy. Yeah, I know. I want that too. He's he's just like the funniest. Letting he has this like raspy like so good. He's like mama, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. and he gets in our bed every single night. But he's no, like got this so like sweet. Mattis, our oldest, is like a string bean and mm-hmm. kind of always has been. Super skinny body, tall, lean. 
Callum I don't know what that's like. is never. <laughs> don't even know what those words Where mean Where did together? that body type come from? <laughs> Not it. Tall and lean. Huh. Um, Callum is more my speed, just yeah. like medium and squishy. <laughs> the best body you yeah. ever, like the softest skin. He's like Greek god skin. Uh, and he sleeps without a shirt on because George sleeps without a shirt on. So he says, no, I sleep like daddy. Oh and he gets god. in bed with us every morning at 3 a.m. Like clockwork. No, but I'm he just so jealous. crawls in between us and like, like full spoon he has to be fully spooning you Mattis like won't touch so us so it jealous. is heaven i i tried to get poppy heaven. to nap oh, yeah. with me get the fuck absolutely out of here absolutely not <laughs> yes no you there's hope yet okay i feel like callum started this nap this sleeping with us journey around th- i also i can't believe we're like oh it's oh so great we get woken up at 3 a.m but it's cute but it they'll only be little for a they'll little bit they'll only be little for a little bit and you know bit. what i've decided because like i don't know if we'll be able to have another kid I'm okay with it. Like yeah. she's gonna be just fine. Yeah, we're not we're not co-sleeping. Like it's yep. gonna be just like I just am down for whatever journey we're gonna go on. Yeah. Wait, I do feel like because we were oh, laughing so hard about your miscarriage, so we didn't finish your fertility journey. So oh. you have two eggs in the oh, bag. Nice. Yeah. That and ski camp. We'll do something. We'll with see them what eventually. happens. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. I love my fertility doctor. I talk yeah. to him at least once a week. Like Great. we're buddies. He wants to take me out for dim sum. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> this is not appropriate, but I'm so into it. <laughs> I love that. Um, I love a good inappropriate. Dying to meet his wife and children. Yes. He's very familiar with our whole family. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Who knows? Yeah. We'll just kind of, I'm just like down to, if we only have Poppy, I will be so happy. Like, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, I really... I'm very at peace with that. How did you become at peace with that? Is that something, like, have you, since the first miscarriage after Poppy, have you been like, okay... I think it was what will recent. Be, will be? Yeah. I think I was finally just like, what if we... What if... What if what if my body doesn't respond to the drugs that you do, do via IVF and that's why these embryos aren't sticking? Because, like, that's a thing. Some mm-hmm. people just don't do well with the drugs. Um... And I was like, I like forced myself to imagine life with just Poppy. And I was like, oh, family vacations will be cheaper. Like, it's just like, okay. Yeah. Like, I'm okay to have an only child. I was one of two. So like, that was never the reality I thought about growing up. But like, cool with it if it is. Like, I'm so, I'm so okay and thrilled with our little family unit of three. Yeah. Whatever else happens is just a blessing. Did you, have you, do you, are you in therapy? Do you do a lot of therapy? No. Yeah, because that's a very therapy. My mom's therapy, my therapist. Yeah, that's yeah. a very like therapy. I'm I'm not either, but have been in the past. And that's like one of the sort of techniques is like, what's the worst case scenario yeah. here? Right. The worst case scenario is like, you I have a perfect get little keep, redhead. You get to keep your perfect little redhead yeah. and like hang out with her all the time. Yeah. And like her life would be sick. Sick. <laughs> sick no i think that the only child getting a bad rap thing is the weirdest yeah miss yeah it's mistaken a misconception, t- misconception. Yeah. like being an only child would be sick being yeah. an, being a parent of an only child would be sick. it's easier but also at the yeah. same time like i i look at like you guys are going to when you're older and you have all three kids home for thanksgiving and they all have yes. their friends over and you have this huge full table yep that's amazing yep but I can do that with friends. Yep. Like Poppy can have her friends. So, like we could be this like, s- like what's it called? Like an adoptive home for every Found like, family. Yeah, like whatever. Like we, I, by because of my job, we will always have a full table yes. because that's how I like show my love. But that idea of having a full family at mm-hmm. your Thanksgiving table or holiday table is very cool. Yeah. You know? It is. Yeah. But so is the found family I version. think whatever, yeah, whatever happens, happens. But like there's Gosh. no wrong way. There's no Amazing. wrong path. Yeah. So. Wow, I hope that somebody who's going through a fertri- fertility moment gets to listen it's to this the because best that is a silver really... lining I've ever been able to give someone. Yeah, like if I, everyone always said, my friends do not have fertility issues. Yeah. Like my closest ten friends have not had fertility not issues. Yeah, and everyone's always like, "Is that hard for you?" And I'm like, "Not really," because I get to educate all of them on how to be more sensitive to other people yes. in their lives, or I get to share this through what's Gabby cooking. And I've been, I've like, my doctor has like 45 new patients because of me. Like, I get to help influence. Yeah. Like, cool, and that's I, incredible. Just in LA, he has, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just like a weird perk of yeah. the job. I bet that the days that you talk about fertility are break the DM days. Yeah, just they are explosions. Yeah, and it takes me weeks to recover. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I you will... have to really like time out when. Yeah. But I also, you have to respond to those. Yeah. Like those oh, I yeah. can't not they, like, respond to. Need, they need you much more than somebody in the grocery store who they're out of large Correct. eggs. What do they get? <laughs> well, and they'll just DM Thomas if they can't get a hold of me, if they like really have a burning Stop. cook. Yeah. Because Thomas, Thomas has an Instagram that was just made to make fun of me, but they know he's active. In What's his Thomas team. eating? Yeah, he's, yeah. It's just there to make fun of me. He's gotten a little lazy <laughs> since we've had Poppy. So it's been a little dormant the little last dormant. couple of years. But uh, they know that if I don't respond, they know they can get to me through Thomas. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, he's also part of He's on salary. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's on the salary. He's getting a paycheck. He's on the payroll. <laughs> Answer that question, Thomas. All right. Before we go, which I'm like depressed about, I don't want you to ever leave. <laughs> what do you cook when you just can't? What do you cook when you don't feel like cooking? Oh. <sighs> I'm an Arizona girl. Yes, so for you me, are. it's a taco. <sighs> yeah. Like, but here's the thing. For me, it's not about cooking. It's the prep work I don't yep. like. I don't want to chop up a chicken breast. Yes. That's upsetting to me. Yes. So if I can get a rotisserie chicken or saute up some ground chicken, uh-huh. throw it into a charred tortilla Ugh, with just some smashed meat. avocado and some like store-bought salsa, I'm okay. Okay, so some ground chicken, your taco, taco seasoning. seasoning guacamole, is, salsa, and a charred flour tortilla. Ugh. That's what I'm cooking. Okay, when you renovated your kitchen in the past year or two, yeah. did you put in gas? I have a gas stove, yeah. Every Does everyone ask you that? People they, are mad. Some people, people are, are mad. mad. Well, I don't think... I'm like, I, I literally had to have a gas stove so that I could char my tortillas. Yeah, that it's not, you cannot char them otherwise. Like, Can't I would it. be charring them with a flame yeah, under like a, f- a match or something yep. like that, like a blowtorch. Yeah, blowtorch. That's I, what it is. I, I just love fire. Me too. I mean, that's why I wrote this book. I have like, to be able to see it yeah. physically. How much is it touching the bottom of the skillet? I get that's that how the I develop. induction, whatever it's called, is better for the environment. Mm-hmm. I get it. But I do a lot to save the environment otherwise. Yes. Like, I'm making up for my gas. Consume. I start. I have a food and yard waste. Yeah, I recycle. I don't use paper towels. I have an electric car. Look oh my us. god, that's I something I got to get better at. That's a skill. You just when you finish that last roll, you don't buy the new ones, and but I'm sure you have tons of kitchen towels. Yeah, you adjust. And what do you do in a bin? Like, what if you have to blot your meat? You don't. Oh, I use a kitchen towel, and you throw it in the dishwasher uh-huh. or in the uh-huh. whatever the bin, it's called, laundry machine. The yeah, and then you know when it's full. <sighs> Smart. It's probably gross because it has like um, soap on it. But Not I really. just bl- every time I every time out. I blot meat, I block. The, I just kind of. No, well, that's way healthier for the world. That's right? incredible. At least it's healthier for the world. Even if my kids are eating a little bit of laundry soap, that's fine. You know what <laughs> we all do. <laughs> okay, so ground chicken taco. That's a really good yeah. Answer. Or rotisserie chicken taco if I yeah. can't be bothered to yeah, make yeah, ground yeah, yeah. meat. Uh, but like I'm a taco. Chicken. I'm a, anything with guacamole is yep. for me. Where's the best rotisserie chicken in LA from? Oh, the Hollywood Farmers Market on Sundays. There's a rotisserie chicken man, and he has oh. potatoes on the bottom, oh. so the fat drips from. The, it is phenomenal. It's a good chicken. We can't buy them because they're gone in one day, yeah. and I'm like, this was supposed to last me three days, mm-hmm. but they're. And you know, I did you ever go to Boston Market as a child? Of course, I went to Boston Market as a child. I love the quarter yes. chicken dark, and the yes. skin tastes like the Boston Market. <sighs> it's so good. <laughs> Ooh, a rotisserie chicken. Well, I mean, it's kind of your everyday. Rotis- yeah, whatever he's using. A rotisserie it with. chicken rub would be a. a well, d- it, it, yes, it is very much like every day, but like anything to make yeah. a crispy chicken skin. Yeah. I love skin. Oh, it's so good. Have you ever been to Suvla in San Francisco? Of course I have. I yep. love Suvla. They do I that also same. love their frozen yogurt. Oh, it's so good. You guys have great but food. But not out with there. olive oil on top. No, I'm not into that. I like the one with baklava. Yeah, baklava. Yeah. When people get it with the olive oil, I'm like, I don't understand. I saw someone do- talking about that on TikTok. They're like, I had the most amazing so and so with olive oil on top. Top of it, I'm like, what about a cookie? And literally, are you lying, or do yeah. you actually think that that was good? I think they've forgotten what real, real sugar tastes like, yeah. like what real dessert tastes like. Because someone recently said Ooh, to me, "This is the great. best gluten-free, vegan-free, sugar-free cookie," and I was like, "It just can't taste good. Mm-mm. It can't." Like, sure, it is the best of those 15 parameters you right. just gave. I believe you. But you that. also don't remember what it tastes like to have a real cookie. Yeah, so. non-gluten-free, yeah, dairy-free, non-sugar-free. I don't know. We, we killed um, the light. 
Oh my gosh, I have like eighty thousand more. I questions never want to leave. You just are you podcasting all day? Because we should just go yeah, to lunch. Should we just keep going? This is amazing. Oh, let's I just, need someone. Let's just bring the mix with like, us. Someone to lunch. has to pick up my child up. Hold on, let me <laughs> yeah, tell Thomas to pick her up. I was like, I'll be home by one. I won't be home by one. <laughs> um, Gabby, thank you so much. This was I, so fun. Uh, I want to have an event with you. I want to yeah, have a full retreat with you. I want to go just on vacation. Like, with should you. we leave our children at home and our husbands? Yes. Okay, we'll just go on a girls' trip. Yes. Although our kids. They would Callum have fun. And Bobby Let's, would we'll come up to you guys because we owe Megs a trip yes. to the to the aquarium. We can this do that, and it. then we'll leave everyone there and go on a girls' trip. I'm not kidding. I actually think. I mean, as you know, with these book tour things, you it's hard because you want to hit the market where the most people are. Can we host are, something? But you also want to hit those smaller markets. Yeah. I bet you have a huge audience in Carmel. That would be really fun. Gabby, thank you. For coming. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this was the best <laughs> podcast ever. 